Hello and welcome to another trip report. This time from Koblenz to Luxembourg on a Regional Express. These are local express trains. It's a little bit below intercities in Germany. Um, but for many countries, actually, the Regional Express trains are pretty equal to intercity trains. Um, this is actually the main route if you're traveling between Germany and Luxembourg. Tell you more about this in the video. What I will do in this video, I will show you the railway station of Koblenz Hauptbahnhof. This is where I'm at right now. Then I will show you the train on this route and of course some views from the train. Um, this train runs as far as I know. I haven't done that much research. But for a big part along the Muso River. So the views, I think they will be pretty nice. Um, it will be from here to Trier and then, well, continues to Luxembourg. Anyway, I will tell you more about this with the use of voiceover. For now, I hope you like this video. If you do so, give me a thumbs up on YouTube. And if you'd like to see more train related videos, subscribe to my channel. For now, let's roll the intro. I arrived a day earlier at Koblenz with the combined sleeper train and intercity that runs between the Netherlands and Switzerland. Obviously, I took the intercity part for this because taking a sleeper train where you leave at 1 o'clock at night, it's not that obvious. Koblenz Hauptbahnhof is the main railway station in the city of Koblenz. Well, it's also named main railway station in German. At the front of the railway station, there's quite a big bus stop. And directly located at the bus stop there are some shops, but you find more within the railway station. Between the front of the railway station and the big bus station, there is a digital departure screen for information about departing buses. But at this point you also find some old fashioned paper timetables for buses. A parking grass is located right under the square at the front of the railway station. And at the side, there's a pickup and drop off zone for railway passengers by car, a taxi stand, and if you move a little bit more forward, there's also a parking spot for bikes, although it's not very big. Well, let's enter the railway station and see what we can find inside. Koblenz is a category 2 railway station, what is the second highest rank of railway stations you can find in Germany. It's not a very big station though, but what means if you have a category 2 railway station is that you will always find staff around here. So there's a ticket counter and information point, vending machines for tickets and of course you also find some shops within here. What I really liked was the interior of the bakery spot over here. There are two tunnels that will link the front of the railway station to the platforms and within one of these tunnels you also find elevators. The other tunnel does only have stairs. Within the tunnel there are some more vending machines and old fashioned timetables. A digital departure screen is located right before you enter these tunnels. For railway enthusiasts there is also a DB railway museum located within Koblenz. Well I didn't have time to go there but it might be interesting to go here one day. Koblenz is located along a railway line that's quite important for long distance train travel between North, West and South Germany. Until 2002 this was the main line to travel along that route. However in 2002 a new high speed line has been opened between Cologne and Frankfurt and this high speed line reduced the travel time a lot. Trains can go up to 300 km over there. And besides that, a high speed line is always more in a straight line than conventional railway lines. Koblenz is mainly an important regional transportation hub. And for travelers traveling between Germany and Luxembourg or via Luxembourg, this is also the most important railway station. In Koblenz you find connecting long distance trains. And in Koblenz you also find the regional express or the local express trains that will go to Luxembourg. The local trains in Germany all do have numbers, but these numbers are per region. So you might find specific numbers in several spots of the country, but these are still different trains though. The number for the trains that do run between Koblenz and Luxembourg is RE11. RE stands for Regional Express, so local express trains. 
on this section Koblenz Trier. This train will be combined with the RE1, so the Regional Express train number one. And that train makes a rather interesting route. This is the route for that train. Well, I bet there is almost nobody who takes this train from the beginning to the end. However, that train does make sense if you're traveling between Koblenz, Trier and Saarbrücken or between Trier, Saarbrücken and Mannheim. The trains on this route are the KISS trains made by Stadler and on the RE1 you will find the FLIRT trains made by Stadler. Because both of these trains are made by Stadler, these trains can be combined. And this here are the trains you can expect on the RE11, so between Koblenz and Luxembourg. It has been clearly marked where you find the first and the second class with the numbers 1 and 2, and a yellow line does exactly indicate where you find the first class. Also the bike compartments have been marked very clear with bike icons and these are marked green. Icons at the side do indicate what facilities can be found where, and digital LED screens will host route information at the side of the train. So basically the final destination and the train number. The trains on this route are being operated by the CFL, so the state-owned railway company of Luxembourg. In general, these trains do run every hour on the route Koblenz-Luxembourg. However, on some times of the day, there might be that you have to change trains in Trier. But if that's the case, it's just a cross-platform anyway. For now, let's have a closer look at the interior of these Stadler KISS trains. These trains do consist of three carriages. And the front and the back carriage are the same. So totally at the front and totally at the back. There's some small space for bikes. Near all entrance doors you will find these screens that will host route information. And there are also LED screens that will host basic route information, the date, the time, etc. The layout of all seats within this train is in a 2x2 two two configuration, so two seats on both sides of the aisle. The second class seats do have a blue color and the first class do have a red color. Within the middle carriage there are some single deck kind of parts of the carriage. And at the lower deck there is a lot of space for bikes, people traveling in a wheelchair. Near this spot you also find a toilet. Well actually two toilets. One toilet that's also wheelchair accessible and can be turned into a nursery space for babies. And then there's just a normal smaller toilet. At the other side of the regular toilet, there's a space for the conductor, what you can see here on the left. Of course, no trip report is complete without doing a toilet review. So let's review the bigger toilet within these trains. I didn't review the other toilets, by the way. Because this is an accessible toilet, you can find these extra things to support. And like I mentioned before, this can be turned into a nursery space for babies. For the rest, there's nothing special. Everything worked, it was clean, and that's most important. And believe me, I test everything out, but I didn't put that on camera. A coat hanger can be found here as well, and I think that's it. At the upper deck of the middle carriage, so also the carriage where you find the toilets, you will find the first class. The seats of the first class do have a red color, and right before and at the end of the first class, there are some more second class seats. At first, the first class doesn't look that much better as the second class. But at the moment I tested these out, I do have to say, you do have way more leg space. I truly love these bigger tables. And in first class, all seats do have power plugs. Within second class, you find some power plugs, but there are not a whole lot of them. Power plugs can be found below the seats. The seats that do come in an airline style composition, well, they just have more leg space than in a second class, but it really makes a big difference. This is how the seats in the second class do look like. Well, basically the same, but you just have way less leg room and there's no carpet on the floor. All seats at the upper deck do have a sunscreen at the side. This doesn't count for the lower deck and a small coat hanger can be found in the seat in front of you. Because these are double deck trains, the overhead luggage racks, especially at the part where this is a double deck train, 
doesn't give you a whole lot of space for your luggage. At the section where this train is not a double deck train, you just have some more space, but it's not an awful lot. Most capacity for passengers can be found at the first and the last car of these trains. These two cars are fully second class. Most seats in second class do come in an airline style or long distance bus composition and a little less than half of the seats do face each other. At the moment the seats do face each other. There's a table at the window, so the window seats do have a table between the seats. At the upper deck, there's uh, one spot where you find power plugs uh, for the second class seats. And that's at the point where you have the solo seats that do face each other. For the rest, I didn't notice any power plugs in second class. From what I mentioned before, these trains will be combined on the section Koblenz Trier with the RE1. The RE1 runs with trains that are also being made by Stadler, but these are the flirt trains. Personally, I like these trains a little bit more. They're just a little bit more comfortable and also more suitable for traveling on longer distances. Apart from that, although I didn't test it out in the Luxembourgese trains, but these trains do have Wi-Fi available as well. I will do a very quick tour of these trains as well, because if you take the direct trains, you most likely end up in the double deck trains I showed you earlier on anyway. Well, a quick tour. The seats that do face each other do have combined bigger tables in between, and sometimes they are just quite small. And at the moment the seats do face each other, power plugs can be located right under the garbage cans. Near the entrance doors there are some space where you can park bikes or if you're traveling in a wheelchair or a buggy there's some special area for this as well. And obviously near this spot you also find a wheelchair accessible toilet. And well near the wheelchair accessible toilet you also find the spots where you can park wheelchairs. If you're traveling with young children this toilet can also be turned into a nursery space for babies. Well, most seats do come in an airline style or long distance bus composition. And there's a combination of tray tables within these seats. I found these tray tables that are rather interesting. You have to put some power on it to put them out. But no, these are more like coffee cup holders. But there's a laptop holder as well integrated within these tables. The other tables look like this. They're a bit bigger, but there's no laptop holder integrated within this table. The first class of these trains, well, the seats, I think they're just as wide as in the second class. But there's one section where you just have some more space in general. The other part of the first class, well, it doesn't provide that much extra compared to second class. Although I didn't test these seats out. I think you have some more leg space and maybe more power plugs. Throughout the train you find lots of overhead luggage racks for your luggage and I think that's it for these trains. In terms of ticket prices it's worth knowing something. If you're traveling on weekdays after 9 o'clock or on weekends or national holidays you have this so-called Rheinland-Pfalz luxe ticket. This allows you to travel on all public transport in the Rheinland-Pfalz and Luxembourg area for 25 euro for one person up to 49 euro for five people for second class and first class is not even that much more expensive and traveling within luxembourg with public transport is for free as long as you're traveling on second class for first class you'll need to pay a surcharge but that's included if you buy this product at the first class section of course However, I made some more videos when I did this and like I mentioned in the introduction of the video, I arrived here with the combined intercity and sleeper train that runs between the Netherlands and Switzerland. Of course, I took the intercity part because I got out at the middle of the night at 1 o'clock. Because I also wanted to film this train as good as possible, I went to Amsterdam and well, took some more time over there. And I booked my train this way. And I only paid 27 euros 90 for this. I've planned some extra time in Koblenz, obviously to sleep. I didn't take this specific train. For this specific situation, 
the price is based on the demand of passengers for the long distance train in Germany, so on the intercity train that runs between Amsterdam and Koblenz. Of course, when the demand is higher, the price will go up as well. And I hear you thinking, but this train goes to Luxembourg, right? Yes, that's true, but if I would have bought the ticket to Luxembourg, it would have cost me 37 euros and 90 cents instead of 27 euros and 90 cents. But when I buy this ticket to Ijo and then buy a separate ticket to Luxembourg, the total price would be 29 euros and 70 cents. This saves me 8 euros and 20 cents on total. What isn't a huge amount, but compared to all the other prices, this is a huge amount. With these tickets, I can take any train within the Netherlands that's going to the train that is heading to Koblenz. So it can also travel via Utrecht, what makes a lot more sense for me. But since I also made a video about the combined sleeper train and night intercity between the Netherlands and Switzerland, I just wanted to have some extra time at the railway station of Amsterdam. For the local train from Koblenz to Eagle and also from Eagle to Luxembourg by the way, I can just take any train I like as well. And because public transport in Luxembourg is for free anyway, I just booked it as far into Luxembourg as possible, what is 12 years. These long distance train fares in Germany are based on the amount of passengers and sometimes it might be actually cheaper if you buy the ticket from Luxembourg, the country of Luxembourg. So if you're planning to travel on this route, just look up different options at the website of Deutsche Bahn. I said this before and I should really make some progress with this, but I will make a video about train fares in Germany. For long distance trains it's worth knowing some specific things, especially for international journeys. And for regional tickets there are so many options that it's actually a complete mess. And if you just know some things and how these regions work and how you can book those tickets, it can really help you a lot. For the last part of the video I'll show you some views from the train on the section Koblenz Trier, Luxembourg. I did this trip actually on quite a grey day. It's foggy, well obviously no sunshine as well. The clouds were hanging really low, so therefore you could not see the mountains that well either. And it was winter, so the trees don't look that nice either. But it's still quite a scenic route, and especially if you do this on a sunny day in autumn, summer or spring. But I decided to do this trip on a grey early morning in January. This area is famous for the wine production line.
before I end up this video. If you're interested in other trip reports, of course you can find them on this YouTube channel or you can subscribe to this channel. That's very much appreciated by the way. But you can also find a link to a map in the description of this video and on this map you find all trip reports I did. The lines do indicate the routes and the train icons do indicate the railway station reviews. There will be more lines added to this of course. If you like this video or this has been a helpful video to you, please give me a thumbs up. This will really help to grow the channel. And if you have any questions or even if you just want to say hello, just leave a comment. And of course, if you like to see more videos like this, just subscribe to this channel. So that's it for this video. I'm right now at Luxembourg main railway station. This place has been improved since I've been here the last time. I also featured that in this railway station in that video. Um, the tram is now finished, the bus stop is totally different, they're still doing some final touching things on the construction works. So I think if this is ready I will well, find a way to include this railway station again. Um, anyway, I hope you liked this video, if you do so give me a thumbs up on YouTube. If you'd like to see more train related videos, subscribe to my channel. Um, from here on I will take one of the most bizarre international train lines you can find in Europe. Tell you more about that in that video for now. That's really it for this video. I hope you liked it and see you on my next video.